Hey everyone, uh, welcome to part 3 of my Soul Level 3 Sorcerer playthrough. Uh, if you've been watching the whole time, you know that up to this point I haven't really fought too many bosses yet. Uh, I did a lot of uh, item collecting and going through and just upgrading weapons and doing what I could to get my character to be pretty strong here. Um, so a little background is, when I do these kind of challenge playthroughs, I tend to do what I call a dry run. I'll run through the game for about an hour using the rule set I set up just to see if it's feasible, see if I need to tweak anything. Uh, so with this playthrough, I did a dry run, and I got to about this point before I stopped. So what you're seeing right now is my first attempt uh, with all this gear that I have on any boss. So it'd be pretty interesting. I wasn't sure uh, what to expect, and uh, I think it'll be a fun video. <laughs> you notice that guy right there almost killed me. I don't even know why I haven't killed him yet. Uh, I just keep running by him. I'm always in a hurry here. But now I can slow down and kind of enjoy the game. You also notice I just cast Hidden we uh, hidden Body. Uh, it turned out to be really useful. I never used it before. Uh, I knew that it could help you with enemies, but I wasn't actually aware that it was this powerful. It comes in really handy, and you're going to see me use it an awful lot running through some of the more benign areas. Uh, so I'm getting ready to take on the Gargoyles. And keep in mind, I haven't fought them yet. So I didn't go into hyper mode because I wasn't quite sure how difficult those was going to be. Uh, so you're getting ready to find out. Three hundred four damage. Uh, that's not too bad for not being in hyper mode. Uh, had I decided to go hyper mode, they probably would have went down uh, twice as fast as this. As you're seeing, it's not it ended up being very difficult at all. I mean, I kind of figured it wasn't going to be hard, but uh, it was a little bit easier than I expected. It's probably one of the easier gargoyle kills I've ever done on a fresh character. Um, but this is what I did all that work for, so it's coming in handy, I guess. And I kind of fast-forwarded here. I did want to show the ringing of the bell since it is a major part of the actual game. And I'm going to do the same thing going down. Uh, I talked to Oswald only just uh, I couldn't remember what he sold. I ended up getting one purging stone as insurance just in case I ever got cursed. Truth is, the only thing that's ever cursed me in this game is Seath. I've never ever been cursed by a frog. Even on my first playthrough when I didn't even know they could curse you, I saw my meter build up and I just stayed out of the uh, their breath or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so I fast forwarded and you don't want to see me go from the Firelink Shrine again. Uh, I'm just going to head towards the depths. Uh, the good thing about this video is I've already done all the, the pre uh, pre work I guess you could say. Uh, so I'm pretty much just going straight through the boss fights. You know that I do have the master key, however I'm still going through the game since this is a challenge playthrough and also an experiment uh, to see how much damage I can do with a low level character. So I definitely wanted to go through some of the areas that I could have skipped. I'm going to go to bonfire here and uh, just reset the aggro in case those guys decide to follow me. Mr. Dragon here is already gone. Kind of getting addicted to this spell, as you can tell. I know that I did promise you guys that I would uh, kill a lot more enemies, and I definitely am planning to, and you'll see that on this playthrough, but um, some of these mundane enemies like this, I'm always going to run by them. Yeah, it's just it's faster and probably less boring. I mean, we all know anybody can kill those guys, so there's really no reason to show it. So I've already been down here once, if uh, you watched the previous videos, but all I did was kill two of the dogs. Uh, this is the first time I'm going to face the uh, Hollow Thieves, which are actually kind of a nightmare for a low level character. Combined with the dogs, they get your bleed build up really quick and uh, kill you really fast. So uh, I'm trying to be really careful here. I don't want to have to run through here a second time since it's already not my favorite area. So I'm going to take the safe route with most of these guys. I usually try to parry just about everything, but these guys just aren't worth it because if I miss it, uh, I get hit two or three times, I'm going to get bled out. Uh, besides the fact that they will backstab me or parry me as well. So I'm going to cheap them with some backstabs for a little bit here. You'll notice I'm going to slow down and let this dog see me. Uh, it's easy if you run too far to get all three hollow thieves on you along with both dogs. So if you peek around the corner, that dog will see you. And he'll come along. But if you slowly walk up like that, the other dog won't see you and you can take on the thieves alone. 
Uh, getting swamped in this area is usually what kills you. Three thieves and a dog all on you at the same time, even if you're blocking. It takes about a second to keep your bleed bar all the way built up. Uh, as you notice, my magic weapon ran out, and my damage to these guys is really low. So I gotta sneak away real quick and try to uh, enchant my weapon. I finally got a little break there. Another backstab. Two more to go, and I'm home free here. Uh, you notice, I think my uh, magic weapon was adding about 70 damage per hit, so that's not too bad. Uh, I think that has most to do with the Ulusile Catalyst, because I don't think the other items I have, I don't think Dust Crown Ring, uh, not Dust Crown Ring, uh, the Dust Crown or the Dragon Crest Ring have anything to do with it. That's purely the Ulusile Catalyst with 15 intelligence. It still adds a pretty good amount. Probably wondering why I didn't take on the Capper yet. Well, I decided I wanted to play it safe and uh, run and open the gate down the Firelink area just in case I died and I can have a shortcut back here. It seems like every time I skip that part and fight the Capra, I end up dying uh, by something really stupid. So this time, again, I'm playing it safe. This is an extremely long tunnel, by the way. It always amazes me how far you have to run just to open this gate. I'm going to go ahead and stop at the merchant here, uh, picking up a few moss uh, specifically for uh, Blight Town area. Grab a few more homeward bones. As you can tell, I use them all the time. It saves a lot of time just warping back after you uh, kill a boss or uh, get to go grab an item yeah, and you just want to get back to the bonfire quick. Uh, I'm getting hit here purposely, obviously. Uh, I want to get into hyper mode to take on the Capra. Now this fight was probably my funnest fight in this, uh, this video. I wasn't sure how the Capra fight was going to be. I had an idea worked out in my head that might work. Uh, so this was an experiment. I wasn't sure if it was going to end uh, badly for me or if it was going to work out how I wanted. Uh, but I decided I'd go ahead and go for it. Uh, plus, I haven't seen how much damage I can pull out uh, with all this gear equipped at the same time and in hyper mode. So this was kind of new. I was really excited to see what kind of damage I could pull out. So my experiment here was to uh, go hidden body just to see if it worked. And as you can see, it did. The dogs have no idea I'm there. It's just me and the captain. Two hits. And final. That's almost 500 damage for a level 3 sorcerer. Uh, that's not bad. I, it was almost kind of funny how easy that was. Usually the Capra is one of the, the harder considered bosses, I guess you could say. Uh, even for me, even on like my naked run, I did pretty good on him. But sometimes you just get stuck by the dogs and it could be a nightmare. But uh, that worked out really well. Straight down to the depths. You notice I haven't used a bonfire yet. Uh, I'm pretty confident in these areas. I've been in the depths and Blight Town a lot. So I know them very, very well. 509 damage. That's pretty crazy. I'm staying in hyper mode for a reason. I want to see if I can take this butcher out. Again, this is something I've never tried before. I just assumed I could do it. Just got to get close enough. And uh, that was definitely not intended. Thankfully, I still have my uh, hidden body on, so these guys aren't even aggroing. I'm just picking them out one by one. So this time I uh, get it right. You can target him. You're just close enough. 500 damage. Missed him on the second one. But he ain't getting away. So, strangely enough, my plans have worked. At least up to this point. I'm healing now because I have to run and jump across. There's a dog down there. 
and the chances of me surviving that while having such low health are pretty low. Uh, I love this little shortcut I found out. It's so fast. And if you do what I did just there and do a plunging attack, you can actually hit the butcher with that. I've done that before, actually. Uh, with a strong weapon, you can kill the butcher before he even knows what's going on. Take out my friend the giant rat here. didn't notice it at the time, but I forgot the rat drops humanity. Uh, obviously, I haven't been using them that much. In fact, I don't think I've even used that humanity yet. Uh, but had I realized that was a humanity, I would have picked it up. But strangely enough, I beat the gargoyles and I beat the capra demon without even taking so much as a hit. And the first dangerous foe I come across is this stupid guy by the bonfire door. These, uh... Undead fire guys, I forget their names, they're one of the most irritating enemies in the game. They do so much damage, and the timing on that stupid torch, uh, I don't even bother trying to parry it usually. It's just too risky, especially when they do that crazy attack where they do about six swings in a row, because if you miss a parry on that one, you're going to get hurt. So I fast forward it just a little bit. The only thing I do in uh, the depths down here is to take out the stupid channeler. Uh, if I'm playing a stronger character, I don't bother because I'll just dodge his um, little soul arrows he fires at you while you're fighting the uh, gaping dragon. But considering I was planning on going into hyper mode, I just didn't want to risk it. So otherwise, I don't do anything else down here. I'm just in here to uh, get to the boss and finish him off. I don't need to buy anything. There's no treasure down here that I need. that rat. Obviously I meant to hit uh, left bumper. Chandler's gone. That was quick and easy. There goes my homeward bone again. And off to the gaping dragon. Uh, you'll notice I have my leather shield on again. Uh, I explained in the last video why I keep that around even though I have the heater shield which is superior. This is so that I can uh, get myself into hyper mode safely. It actually works out pretty well for that. It lets a fair amount of physical damage through, so that if you get yourself near, uh, hurt enough to get into that mode, uh, it's, it only takes one or two blocked hits to take you there. Yeah. <clears throat> I take out these rats real quick. They have this nasty habit of aggroing me while I'm trying to fight the slimes. And same with this guy. They don't look at you, they turn the other way, but it seems like every time I leave them alone, Next thing I know, they're attacking me. A couple more blocked hits should do it. And there we go. Slimes are actually the perfect creature to do that for. They're so slow. Uh, once you get into hyper mode, you can just take off. They can't even chase you. I decided to go with his heavy soul arrow on this guy. Uh, he's so slow, I knew I'd get, be able to get a few shots off without getting hurt. So I really wanted to see what kind of damage I could do. Nice shot on the first one. Second one, 1,036. I was actually pretty amazed to see that number. Uh, what's weird is every successful uh, attack after that doesn't do that much. Only 690. So he apparently my first attack was considered some sort of critical, or he's weaker in the head than he is the body. I'm really not sure which. Either way, he's not going to last long here. This boss is not meant to uh, be tough or sorcerers. I can't imagine how easy it would be if you actually had something like Momin Soul Mass or Soul Spear. This is probably the quickest I've actually taken down the Gaping Dragon on New Game. Of course, New Game Plus, or if you have uh, Solaire with you, uh, you can take him down pretty fast. But for a solo character, that's probably the quickest I've killed that guy. Uh, I 
grab this armor out of habit. I'm not going to use it, but why not? Uh, let's fast forward here to Blight Town. You don't want to see me run down the stairs again. Now you're going to see uh, what I call creative editing here. I didn't really want to do it to try to trick you guys, but uh, I just thought it would be fun to see what it would look like. Basically, the first time down here, which is right now, I wanted to show you that I switched over to the Hornet Ring and all that, and I wanted to show opening the door to Blight Town. And right here is a cut. And now you notice I have 50 souls. So basically what happened is the first time down here, as I was fighting these uh, barbarians, I guess they call them, I actually leaned over and changed the channel on my TV. And by the time I was able to switch back, I was dead. Since I didn't consider it a really a legitimate death, I didn't really want to show it. It's kind of embarrassing, actually. Uh, so I just cut through. You can see my uh, stain up there. Actually, what was strange is I, I don't even know how I got up that far. I think I was only about right here when I uh, when the TV changed. I guess I must have ran forward just a little bit. And as you can see, I'm just parrying these guys. I love parrying the big guys. Uh, it's very dangerous if you miss. These guys can almost kill me in one hit, but uh, they don't have the chance right now. Obviously, if I really wanted to, I could just uh, use Hidden Body and pretty much run right through here to the bonfire. But as I said, I want to take on some uh, creatures this time around so to make the playthrough a little bit more fun to watch. That guy finally got a hit on me. But uh, I'm still getting back. So at this point, uh, I think I proved my point. <laughs> I've had enough. I'm just going to go to the bonfire now. Make the jump to the Aito. I was thinking about fighting my way down, but uh, it just makes it unnecessarily long, and I didn't want to risk getting uh, toxic, so going with my hidden body. It actually worked out really well here. These dogs aren't usually so bad if you have a character that actually uses armor, uh, but for a character like this who has uh, very little armor and very little health, they can kill you real quick. It's kind of annoying. So anyone who's watching and wants to know how to get to Blight, uh, get through uh, Blight Town really quick, this is the way to do it. You don't need Hidden Body to do it, but it does make it just a little bit easier. Normally I go through that fog, but I realized the last time I played through this area that you can make it even faster if you just drop down here. I don't even know why I grabbed the whip, but why not? So if you go through the fog, you'll actually end up in this same area right here. But uh, it's just as easy to drop down. Just a few more things to run past and I'll be in the swamp. So looking back for people who played through this area and, and worked through the hard way, it probably seems like a long way down. But then when you look at it, uh, the shortcuts that I'm showing you here, it doesn't take very long. That fall was intentional. It gets you down to the next level really quick. This fall uh, wasn't really intentional, but it still worked. If you're not careful in that area, you can get uh, the toxic dark guys really quick. There, there's one over there in a the corner that will shoot at you the whole time, so I didn't want to get toxic. That's why I ended up falling off the last second. Make it to the bonfire. So here I cut away, you'll notice my soul level, or uh, my total amount of souls is going to jump up here. What I did was basically take a half hour and just farm the slugs. Uh, eventually I want to make a fire dagger, uh, and plus I want to upgrade my weapon to a plus 10. So the easiest way to do that is to farm the slugs. 
but uh, running through the swamp and killing slugs is not very exciting to watch and it really doesn't have much to do with the challenge so I, it took me about half an hour or so slugs were really easy uh, with magic didn't take very long to do it I ended up getting uh, I think 15 green shards because uh, you get five in a stack I think I ended up with uh, maybe a dozen large titanite shards uh, and I think that's about all I got but it's enough to do what I need to do. So the poison here came in handy actually because I want to fight Quelag in uh, hyper mode. I'm pretty confident at this point that I can dodge her attacks. Quelag's not so hard if you stay away from her anyway. So now I'm in hyper mode. Uh, you can tell I skipped forward really quick there. It took about a minute for the poison to work. Uh, so I didn't want to force anybody to have to watch that. Uh, on Quelag, I decided to go with Great Soul Arrow because it's a little bit faster. And she has this ability to run up and start swinging her weapon uh, quickly. So again, this is new. I haven't tried this before. So let's see how it works. 410 damage. It's pretty good. She must be uh, weak to magic. I've never fought her with magic, so I have never. In fact, I've only ever fought her with a melee weapon. Uh, I have used pyromancy a lot in the past, but pyromancy doesn't tend to work on uh, fire creatures. So this is the first time I've actually used sorcery, and you can tell she's extremely weak to it. Uh, this is probably one of my quickest quail-like fights ever. If, in fact, it probably is the quickest. Which is what I find kind of funny about this playthrough. Even though I'm a soul level three character. Uh, extremely fragile and weak. Uh, I'm killing the bosses faster than a lot of the times I do with my stronger characters. Uh, as you noticed, I was running the wrong way. Uh, it took me about halfway through the tunnel towards Blight Town uh, to realize that I was going the wrong way. So I just turned around and ran back and kind of fast forwarded. I switched over to the Grass Crest Shield because uh, I want to take on the Ceaseless Discharge next. And uh, it's a long run. So even though I can't block with the shield, I still get the stamina regen from it. So it's still handy to have around. I always keep it on me. And I had to take off my, my bandit chest piece there too, because I was running too slow. I had to balance out my weight. So this is actually a pretty boring fight, obviously. I'm sure most of you watching know how to beat Ceaseless Discharge the, the easy way. Occasionally there are a few people that actually uh, beat it the hard way. I actually never have tried. Uh, I almost thought about it this time. Considering I have magic and I can do a lot of damage, I figured it might be worth a try. But again, I didn't want to have to go through here more than once or twice. Because uh, if you noticed, I didn't use the bonfire. Uh, I expected to beat this guy on the first try. That way I can homer bone without running through the swamp again. That's normally how I do it, so it's really risky to try something new. Uh, if I would have died to him, I would have been really irritated to have to run all the way back. Finally made it there. I really wish I had my green blossoms right now, uh, but this shield's gonna have to do. Uh, so there he goes. Uh, if you're not sure on how to do this, the basic trick is to let him do his one attack right there. If you try running before that, uh, he'll smash you really quick. Uh, so just let him do that little attack he does and then take off. Uh, I think you all know how this is gonna end already. Uh, so we're coming towards the end of the third video. Uh, next time around, I'm gonna be going down into the catacombs, uh, take on Pinwheel, uh, also get my fire weapon made since I have the uh, shards for it now. And then after that, I head straight to Sin's Fortress. So hopefully in the next video will be uh, pretty fun to watch too.
goes. And it's over. So that's going to be pretty much uh, it for this one, guys. Uh, hopefully I'll have the next video up in a couple days. I don't know if I have enough footage yet. I actually have to play uh, a little bit more to get caught up. But uh, until then...